Hello, students. How are we doing today? What? I can't hear you. I still can't hear you. I can't hear. No, still can't hear you. Sorry. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. Oh, you didn't ask? Oh, man, now I'm feeling sad. Oh, you did ask? Oh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm a lot better now. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I'm doing great. Okay. <laughs> Enough with the awkward jokes. Um, so this short video is going to go over the star method of factoring when the leading coefficient isn't one. And uh, thank you to Ellie Nguyen, who showed me this method in class today, explained it to me, because I never learned it. You know, as I said, a lot of these things are tricks to figure out the answer. And, um, and this is a good trick. And if you like this way over the box method, go nuts. Let's give it a try. Um, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to try it. I'll do the first problem. And then, um, and then we'll go move on to the second problem. But I'm going to encourage you to pause the video and try the second problem on your own and then go uh, over and then listen to me out and see if you get the same answer I do. Okay, so let's try the first one. So, let's get that in there. There we go. All right, so for the uh, star method to factor this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my six sector star. And what's, uh, what's going to go here, down here is my middle term, the negative 10. And then what's going to go in the upper one is I have to multiply my leading coefficient. So that's going to be the 8 times 3. That's going to give me 24. Now what I need to do is uh, right here is going to go 8x and 8x. So all this stuff is just how we set it up. Um, you should be able to get this here in green. Okay, so now what I have to do is start, um, okay, start playing around with some factors of, in this case, 24. So they're going to multiply to 24 and add to negative 10. So clearly both terms have to be negative. So let's start um, playing with some numbers. 12 and 2. Oh, but they have to be the same sign. So if they're both negative, that'd be negative 14. Okay, nine, or 8 and 3. Uh, close. Negative 11. 6 and 4. Ooh, 6 and 4. That gives us negative 10, right? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put 6 and 4 here, and both are negative. Now, actually, last step, it's not that bad, or second to last step. Um, what i got to do is, is, so I have this 8x and this 6, and this 8 and the, and the negative 4. What I'm going to do is just pretend like it's a fraction, like 8 over negative 6. How would I reduce that? I, I want to just make the numbers relatively prime to each other. How would I reduce that? Well... 4x and negative 3, and in this case, um, yeah, 2x and negative 1. And guess what? That's going to be my solution. 4x minus 3 times 2x minus 1. And if you're not sure, well, just try foiling it out. Let's foil. First will give me 8x squared. Um, the outer will give me negative 4x. The inner will give me 6x. And um, the last will give me... Um, positive 3. So yeah, that works. Look at that. Negative 10x plus 3. I'm back to where I started. Yay. Happy, happy man. Or girl. Whichever one you are. So give this one a try. A little, a little more challenging, but I think you can get it. The numbers get a little bigger, but it's not terrible. Give it a try. Pause it. Okay, so they're going to add up to negative 11. Oh, sorry, got to fix that line. Uh, they're going to add up to negative 11. And they're going to multiply, in this case, uh, 15 times 12 gives me 180. All right, so and here is going to go 15x, and here is going to go 15x. And then again, i got to start playing with factors of 180. Okay, well, there's 18 times 10. Um, one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, so that would either give me plus or minus 8. Uh, again, how do we know one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative, because they're going to um, multiply to a negative number. So that didn't work. Uh, what if I did 20, 20 and 9? Ooh, 20 minus 9 is 11. Good, good, that works, right? 20 and 9. Because uh, again, I'm going to be subtracting them because one's got to be positive and one's got to be negative. 
So which one has to be negative, the 20 or the 9? Good, the 20, right? All right, so uh, here I got, neg I got 15 and negative 20. Again, I want to make these relatively prime to one another or reduce it like I would if I was to reduce a fraction. Divide it by 5. I got 3x and negative 4. And here, same thing. Let's see if I divide this by 3. I got 5x and 3. And that's going to be positive. So that's going to be my answer right there. And one way, you know, I kind of double check this, especially this whole process here, I get a little worried about. Um, but if you could see without even foiling it out, if I did the first, if I'm, when I multiply the first term, the 3x times the 15x, that's going to give me 15x squared. That's good. And if I were to multiply the last two terms, negative 4 and positive 3 will give me negative 12. That's good. I'm not saying that proves that I'm right. I'd have to foil the whole thing out to really show that I'm right. Um, but you know what? Um, I'm going to be pretty confident in my answer right now. All right, guys, I hope this video helps. If you like it, great. If you don't, well, I'm sorry. Um, if you want to use the box method, go nuts. Uh, and it's up to you how you want to do solve these problems. Doesn't matter who you follow, just the emperor is dead at the end.